Now, inshallah ta'ala, uh, I'm going to try to tie all of the lessons of this surah together and understand the, the sequence and the order of this surah. This surah, I would argue, is a progressive surah. Instead of a symmetry, it's more like Allah makes uh, the argument A, B, and C. Like A leads to B, leads to C. That's how the, the surah is structured. The opening of the surah essentially has one message. And that is to the Prophet wasallam. just like the coming of revelation is necessary, gaps in that revelation are also necessary. Just like day and night are both necessary. Okay? And so Allah has not abandoned you. He's not upset. The end is going to be great for you. He, you're going to be really happy by the end. Hope. For first of all, Allah removes sadness. Ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala removes the sadness. Then Allah gives hope. Wala al-akhiratu khairu laka min al-ula wala sawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. So that's hope. So this is the message of optimism to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's number one. Number two, he reminds the Prophet sallallahu you have enough reasons to be optimistic, even if I didn't say that to you, if you just reflected on your own past. What does that mean? You were an orphan. You were lost and seeking, and then you were you were bankrupt. And in both all three of those cases, Allah gave you three things. Awa Hada Agna. Listen to these words again carefully. Allah gave you refuge, Allah guided you, and Allah gave you independence. Right? He removed you from the need of others. Now it's amazing that if we had these three things in life, we don't need anything else. If we had Allah's protection, if we have Allah's guidance. And if we're not desperate before other people. If we have these three things in life, you have a good life. Isn't it? I mean, with, with that in a person's life, what greater blessing can you have? If a person enjoys these three things in their life, then they have the ni'mat rabbik. They have the ni'mah of the rabb. You know? So these three are not just something that Allah gave to the Prophet them. These three gifts of Allah. Awa, then hada, then aghna, also include in them the greatest gift a human being can enjoy in life. Because this was enough for the Prophet ﷺ, for Allah to give complete his favor on him. Then, then who are we? So this is the middle of the surah. Look, be optimistic because Allah has kept, kept taking care of you thus far. Then the third part of the surah. The third part of the surah is now that you realize that Allah has taken care of you. And Allah will take care of you. Now it's time for you to take attention away from yourself and put your attention to those who need this hope also. You were hopeless, Allah gave you hope. Now it's time for you to become a source of hope for others. So who do you start with? The yatim. Then who do you go to? The sail. By the way, the same order. You were yatim, go take care of the yatim. Then you were looking for guidance and you were bankrupt, both of those being you're a sail. So go and go take care of a sail. Go take care of the one who asks. And I would argue the last ayah of this surah is actually tied to those two ayat. In what sense? When you go take care of an orphan, remind them that you used to be an orphan too. It'll be okay. When you go to an asker, or some asker comes to you, some seeker comes to you, let them know, you know, there was a time I was a seeker too. It'll be okay. When somebody's in a bankruptcy, and you go, they come to you, Take care of them, but don't just take care of them, give them hope, remind them of the favor of Allah on you, and through it they will find hope that Allah will give them favor also. You understand? So this is actually how we're supposed to be a source of inspiration, not just of giving to those around us. It's not just enough to give an orphan something. Allah said, كَلَّا بَلَّا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِيمُ You don't, Allah didn't just say you don't give to the orphan, you don't honor the orphan. How do you honor the orphan? You bring them in, you give them, you, you give them shelter, you don't humiliate them, and you give them hope also by talking about the favor Allah has done for you. Finally, I'd like to share with you that the favor of Allah on the Prophet wasallam, the ultimate favor is when Allah said to him, He will give you and you'll be pleased. Remember that, that guarantee? And so that is something Rasulullah will talk about endlessly. And what is that? That, that to me actually directly implies the Qur'an. The great favor of Allah on the Messenger وسلم, is the Qur'an. What that means for us by extension is us talking about the Qur'an is actually us talking about the greatest gift Allah has given us. The greatest expression of our gratitude is actually us talking about the word of Allah. And But it's not just us talking about the word of Allah, us talking about the word of Allah as we take care of those in desperate need, as we take care of the orphan, 
as we take care of the sail. And we don't do nahar of them and qahar of them. May Allah Azza wa Jal soften our hearts towards the Qur'an. And may Allah Azza wa Jal increase our love and adoration for His final messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.